Hey guys, it's Lauren here. Today I'm sharing with you a layout I made for the Hip Kit Club as part of their weekly sketch challenge. Now I was inspired by this wonderful sketch that was full of circles. Now that's really tricky for me. I'm not a circle person but I thought I'm going to kind of flip that and I'm just going to use my rectangle photos and have that same formation down the page so we can always get creative with our sketch as long as that sketch inspires us and gives us some guidelines I think we can be really creative with that. Now the other thing about this challenge was I was also challenged as part of the DT, the design team, to do a uh, a layer using a white background and lots of texture. So as you can see, I'd already made a kerfuffle <laughs> because that's clearly not a white background. So shortly you'll see here, I'll flip this out and in will come a white page, all fresh and new. Um, there we go. Look, see you later. I read, I had a flick quick look over on my desk and saw the challenge and went oh my goodness Lauren what is going on with you so I thought a oh, fresh start we're just going to start again but I did have this idea in mind and it kind of threw me for a bit as you saw I was just sort of pausing there for a minute and thought well I'm just going to go for it I knew the photos I had the sketch that was inspiring me so I knew the design and I thought I'm just going to go with it now, using lots of texture, that's what we wanted to challenge you guys to do as well. Well, here, I'm hopefully going to inspire you to use some use lots of texture on your page so I was trying to think of lots of ways to do that and in this month's colour kit which is May's colour kit I'm talking about here we got this fabulous stencil now it's just these kind of rough scruffy lines that run across now it's really a really cool little stencil but I thought how am I going to make this stencil even a little bit more textured so what I decided to do was using some whip spackle, but you can use any kind of texture paste, modeling paste, anything like that to do exactly what I'm doing here now. I am going to use this stencil and in one diagonal direction, scrape it through as you can see what I've done there. And then I'm going to flip it and I'm going to do a crossways motion. So I'm going to get kind of crisscrosses. So here you go. My brain's trying to work out what to do here. <laughs> How the stencil's going to flip <laughs> and I'm going to crisscross that over the existing diagonal in the in the opposite direction so I'm going to get kind of a weave pattern through my page I'm going to apologize about my light I did this at night and I the lights were just so bright and the camera has just sort of washed that out a bit but I think I'll hold it up in a minute you'll be able to see that bit of texture going crisscross crisscross across the page there and look just when I'm I'm kicking it out of the park I am knocking that ball out of the park with texture just by doing that so I go supersonic with the drying off in this and the fussy cutting because this layout took me a really long time <laughs> so I go supersonic but I think that's a better idea than you listening to me ramble for a long time I, just lately my layout seemed to be taking me longer than usual so I'm really kind of trying to speed up components of the editing so that you guys don't get bored of my voice <laughs> so here I am I've just added some sprays and they were just shimmer sprays from past color kits and I'm just drying that off now and then I'm going to come back in with these cute little powders that we got these are Lindy stamp gang powders and they can mix with texture paste water any kind of medium to give you a a wonderful color they also dilute down so if you add white they actually really blend really well as you can see here I'm just using water and I'm just moving those powders that have been diluted through that texture just to really give some dimension and um, depth to the texture that I've done which you'll soon see that I cover pretty much of it all up but I had a lot of fun playing around and just having just having some fun with a stencil that I would not other like doing something that I would not normally do with a stencil um, and then I leave this to dry um, well I dry it off and then I 
wake up the next morning and finish this layout off. So you'll see my light change a little bit and hopefully it's a bit better for you. But I just wanted to get this section going and I knew that I could just sit there overnight. Uh, not that it needed to, as you can see, it's already dry there and um, I'm just going to sit those there and in the morning I'll come back in and finish that off. So hopefully my light changes. Here we are, morning time. <laughs> Hey, good morning. Um, so I had this fresh idea. I love this peach paper, those cute little flowers with those leaves that really remind me of an Australian gum tree leaf. Um, so they really resonated with me. And so I thought I'm just going to fussy cut those out. My fam, like Katie, myself and Daniel, we were out and we we're going on a bit of an adventure. And so I thought having some leaves and some... Um, you know, florals around really fit well with the theme of the photos, which was lovely. So I'm going to go supersonic here in a minute. I just, even though you can hardly see me do that, I just wanted to show you what I've done to Fussy Cut. And here I go on rocket speed. <laughs> so by Fussy Cutting, I'm also adding another element of texture. All these little bits of embellishments, different types of embellishments. So we've got foam thickers, um, maybe some enamel shapes on there, some cardstock stickers, some uh, fussy cut elements. All those elements create, and here I am going with vellum, another texture, that foiled vellum, so it's shiny. Um, all these things are how we make texture on our layouts. And this is a really fun thing to really try and push yourself to do. I think um, when we're being creative, it's nice to have some challenges. And one thing I really love about the Hip Kick Club Facebook group is that each week they run a sketch challenge and each month they provide a beautiful mood board to inspire you to create. Um, and usually those mood boards are full of different textures and colours to sort of get your mojo going and and that's what I love about the Facebook group everyone shares their layouts everyone really inspires each other so if you're not a member of the Hip Kick Club Facebook group you do not have to be a subscriber to be a part of the family so head on over and um, ask to join the group and you'll be approved and you can come on in and and check out what we're all up to in there which it's just a lovely really positive group so here I am, I fussy cut all my elements and I've put them around where I think they're going to go and now I'm going to start working on these photos. So for, for my photos not to get lost in this texture, I'm going to add some layers and I'm just going to um, just do borders around the photos, just nice thin ones and that just allows the photo to not get lost in the background and become a feature within itself. I think this is a really kind of... Um, easy way to which is almost like a stock standard thing for me with scrapbooking I always mat my photos I always want to add um, some kind of layering under them just so they don't get lost in the in the crazy backgrounds that I that I tend to do yeah so uh, these photos this was a really lovely day um, my a couple of my sisters and my niece and my daughter and I wanted to go on a bit of a bushwalk and this was really technically my first bushwalk. Um, but I knew and I, I've been listening to lots of you know podcasts about um, your mental health and getting out in nature and important and the importance of that so I rallied some troops and my beautiful husband he as you can see he's there with his mountain bike he knows this bush inside and out this is the bush he rides in so I knew that this would be a great safe place for me to be able to try my first bushwalk surrounded by um, my family and they um, they they are more experienced. Well, they're not hugely experienced, but they've been on more bushwalks than me. So I, th I thought I'd drag those guys along and my little girl who she loves to walk with me. We usually walk on the riverbank and and places like that she decided that she wanted to come along and she was great little Katie she charged up the, the big hills and she had a backpack on and she was taking lots of you know water breaks and you know she was leading the way with the pack which just was so great for me because it's just that really um just cementing for me the um 
the young girl she's coming and the wonderful things that we are able to do together now she's getting a little bit older and I love the fact that she loves to come and walk with me so um, we're really enjoying that and so for to sort of signify this it was a real photo opportunity up on top of the mountain once we had conquered it and um, Daniel had ridden up there so it was just lovely to have these photos of us together and um, and to for me to scrapbook them, to really treasure that memory. And and whilst you see me busily scrapbooking here, I'm really delighting in that memory. Um, and, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Do you guys think about your photos and the moments you were having when you were taking the photos when you're scrapbooking them? Or is that just something really crazy that I seem to do all the time? I really delight in them and I'm really mindful about thinking about it and how I was feeling at the time and... Um, and yeah, so that that just tends to be what I do, especially when you've got photos like this, which are really signify an important event there. Okay, so back on track with the technique stuff. Here I was, I'm as you can see, I've done about three layers there. A couple of them I just used a black pen and just put dashes around the side to sort of mimic some stitching effect. I'm too lazy to get the sewing machine out. <laughs> and um, and then the others I've used pink tissue paper just to soften that edge and help it blend into the background and not have that really sharp defined from white to the mixed media. So it's sort of a transition um, piece I use that tissue paper for. And here you can see that even though they have slightly gotten a bit bigger, only a fraction bigger, it has made a significant difference on where my setting out of my layout. So as you can see, I'm really losing a lot of that background, but I'm not too worried about that because I guess it's just the process and it is... Um, and I guess that's the joy in it all. I had a lot of fun making that mixed media background and I know that I'll use that technique again, maybe my art journal or another page. And um, so I'm really glad I did that, even though you can't really see all that wonderful work underneath there. I think it really, um, really doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Do you create layouts like that? Do you do these great backgrounds underneath and then just hide it all with photos? Um, here you can see I'm trying to sneak it, like position them so you can see a little sneaky peek of some of it in the background there. But you watch in a second, they'll all be covered up with beautiful flowers and um, I still won't mind. This layout, oh, my layouts lately seem to be very full and lots of embellishments and, and things like that. And I don't know, it's just, I guess it's just part of your style emerging and and um, changing, I guess, when you're looking on social media and you're being inspired by different people, you tend to just, your, your scrapbooking style evolves, um, you know, and you might pick up some techniques that you've seen on other lovely scrappers process videos or you know or things like that let me know in the comments below where do you find the most inspiration what what what's a form of social media instagram pinterest facebook youtube where do you uh find new techniques where do you get inspired where do you find your um, the thing that really kind of pushes you out of your comfort zone. I'd be really interested to know. I um, I tend to love, I love YouTube. I love seeing process videos, but I really love Pinterest as well. I tend not to look at blogs anymore. I don't know. Do you guys look at blogs anymore? Um, but I, I enjoy Pinterest and I think I'm falling into that trap of that quick fix. You know, social media is moving so quickly now. I've fallen into that trap of, um, you know, not wanting to read too much, just looking at something and getting inspired. Um, and, you know, I think just busy lives tend to and and busy social media tends to for that that tends to happen I'm probably not alone in that um well I hope I'm not alone in that <laughs> um but yeah so I'd love to hear what's your favorite form of social media where you find heaps of inspiration uh, let me know below I'd love to have a chat with you about it so here I am now thinking about my heading 
and I pulled out these blue thickers and they're really oh gosh they're so cute and thick and chunky and then I think no the blue there's not much blue anywhere else the sky wasn't even blue <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't find it anywhere and so I've fallen back on these really cute uh, thickers which uh, just have this super fun higgledy piggledy up and down upper and lower case font to um, create this uh, this title which is which is adventure and I love it it's I love this little font I've used it on a number of layouts and I just keep going back to it so I think I might have to get uh, a few more sets of this one because I think it's really a great little font too when you've got children and and little Katie there that's a you know it's a fun font and she's a fun kid so it kind of matches um, so here I am now just wanting to place out some stickers and some last little embellishments. Now this is um, just coming together really nicely and I'm really just putting stuff down. I really want to just be brave and use up these beautiful products because I know that's going to be a new kit on my door really, really soon and I'm going to um, I'm going to want to bust into that. And so I've decided that, yep, don't think about it, Lauren, just throw those embellishments down and really use them, really um, create beautiful full layouts and um, don't be frightened to use up all these beautiful products. And um, I feel very fortunate to have this hobby and I feel very fortunate to be a part of the Hip Kit Club design team where I get to create with these wonderful kits. And I, and I hope my layouts really inspire you to, um, to scrapbook and I hope you really enjoy my process videos. Let me know in the comments below if there's something you'd like me to do um, or think that I shouldn't be doing <laughs> I'd, I'd love your feedback because I really want to make content that inspires people to create I can't stress to you enough that in this busy world we need to find things that fill our soul and make us happy and this scrapbooking does that for me and I hope if you're watching this it does that for you as well so I'm finishing off now with another little sticker cluster in the bottom corner that cute little uh, retro Polaroid camera just had to finish it off with that and yeah there's my layout done um, if you like this video give me a like oh here I'm trying to add more texture and then rule that out I'm just getting some string there Get, no it's gone <laughs> um, but yeah if you have liked my video give me a thumbs up give me a like and if you're new to my channel and you like my style I'd love you to subscribe uh, take care guys and I'll be back again really soon with a new video for you take care Bye.